Defiance Season 3, Episode 7, The Beauty of Our Weapons. Interesting episode, I think, because it really did a lot for a lot of different characters. Like, one thing that came out of this episode that was really surprising was definitely the Berlin stuff. We got, um, the fact that, you know, her former boyfriend, the reason she actually broke up with him is because she thought that he totally just took off on her and broke off what was actually an engagement and they weren't just a oh, boyfriend and girlfriend they were actually supposed to get married and he thought that she took off because she accepted a, a lump sum from his mother but it turned out that his mom just didn't like her so he she kind of just broke them both up and made them think the other just took off um, without any warning so it was interesting that we kind of got that little bit of backstory out of her and she um mentioned tommy tommy was actually in this episode which is another really big surprise um but you know she talks about tommy to the guy and stuff and he's like you know why don't you come with me like why don't we leave defiance and kind of pick up where we left off since we neither of us really wanted to leave it to begin with and we were duped by my mother why don't we just take off now and berlin decides to leave in this episode and she you know when she goes to amanda and stuff she says she wants her support and stuff because the reason that she's you know, hopefully, you know, obviously there's some part of it where it's like, well, we can pick up where we left off because, uh, you know, she still cared for the guy and kind of this hate that they kind of had for each other or, you know, at least ill will towards each other a little bit was totally made up by someone else. So, you know, part of it is that she does still care for the guy and that she can easily pick things up because they didn't actually hurt each other. It was a third party. But another part of it is that she is running because she's scared and she... You know, she admits that. And for her, it's very different. She feels like she's alone now. You know, she was a part of the E-Rep, and she mentioned that it was, like, her family and people that took care of her. And she doesn't really see Defiance in the same light. Like, obviously she doesn't, because Amanda says, like, we are your family. Like, we are here, you know, you help us defend this town, help us live here, help us survive. But she doesn't see it the same way, and she still takes off uh, by the end of this episode. And I really thought she would... Um, change your mind but she does decide to leave which i feel like is definitely going to lead to something you know in the next episode where it's like here's you know here's what she's doing now where this is how she either why well, i don't think she'll run into Ramtok because they're doing like the sort of underground thing and they've made it into defiance so i think what's going to end up happening is that she'll actually come back and help them fight like they appear to be captured based on the trailer they appear to get captured so i think what's going to happen is she's going to change her mind they'll go back with whatever weapons the guy has left and they'll go in and help protect the town and then they can actually start, you know, fighting back because Berlin changed her mind. So I hope that's how it plays out. Um, it would be, I highly doubt that that's how they're going to write her out of this show where she's just, you know, she left and then we never see her again. So I am curious to see if she gets a spot in the next episode that does kind of change things around because that seems like how it's going to go and if not, then she really would just be written out of the show. They go off and live their life and be happy or, you know, wherever. And then it's just like, oh, well, that doesn't, you know, they're just gone now. So I, I highly doubt that's going to take place. But I'm still excited to see how it plays out for her character, as well as the other guy that she's with. Um, not too interested in him because, you know, he's fairly new. And an enigma, apparently. He was just like, you know, he comes in he's like, all right, you guys get free weapons. Uh, all you have to do is take me out for a drink, and then, you know, that's pretty much it. He talks about how he has, you know, he's a part of this, clearly, like, a rich family, but he mentions that he's basically going to be losing all that money and kind of kicked out and be, like, just, you know, the low end of the totem pole. So, it was really, you know, we got a bit of information on this character as well, so they have some importance for sure. I don't know if he's going to stick around. I feel like Berlin is not, like, a main member, so I don't think she's going to be um disappearing anytime soon hopefully he doesn't get killed off because that would just suck if that happened for her and it's like you know she could at least start something even if they stayed in defiance and then he dies when they decide to come back so hopefully that doesn't happen but there's something going on there that's definitely important and then of course we have all the people who decide they're gonna help fight for defiance and then we have a guy and his son and it's like well if we're risking our lives how come marissa isn't here risking her life how come your family doesn't like even though nolan was it's just like one person um but it's like you know they had their issue and it's the whole voltanus collective thing attacking humans and not some of the other other aliens which 
I do think that some of them have this really high notion of Ram Tak where it's like, oh, you know, you guys are going to be fine, but I'm pretty sure he is going to kill them off. He'd kill off anyone because they've been living in this town. It's not like they just walked in and were like, oh, I guess we're stuck here. They chose to live there among humans and, you know, live under, you know, like their mayor is a human. So, you know, a whole different thing. I, I don't think Ram Tak is going to give a crap. He's going to kind of wipe everybody out if he can. So, I did like that portion, and I loved um, the scene they had with Arissa, and it's like, you know, she decided to stand with everyone and show her support, and she was at the firing range and stuff, and I thought it was going to be, you know, like, a simple little thing at first, like, oh, she's going to freak out, and, you know, she was crying and stuff, and then they have it where she's seeing Tommy, and he's getting shot up, I was just like, they brought Tommy back for that, like, him fake dying all over again, um, or I guess fake dying for the first time, I guess, I don't know. And that was just a really great scene. I, I love that scene because it just stopped everything. And, like, she's, you know, she decides to get back into it because she wants to help support the city, even though it's not really where she is right now as a character. But she decides to show her support and rally everyone and help, you know, get everyone on board. And then she just drops. Like, she sees... I didn't expect her to see Tommy at all. I really thought... It was just going to be the fact that she was shooting a gun in general. She would just think of people that died. But it does make sense that it would be Tommy. Because that's who, you know, she was in love with Tommy. So it makes perfect sense that she would. I just didn't expect it to be one specific person. I just thought it would be, in general, the murders, you know, that she had committed, you know, over the series. And even before the series began. So it was great to see Tommy. It sucked that it was in that way. Because obviously Tommy is dead and he's not coming back and i liked him i always liked him um in the show um so it was just a really great scene i love the way that they did that and she's you know kneeling down and she's really freaked out and everyone you know everyone's around and then nolan gives her a really great speech i think where it's like we have to do this and help the weak and although my daughter isn't she's just not in the right you know mindset where she can really um stand with arms you know side by side with us but until she can, we have to defend this city and other people like her who really can't defend themselves at this point in time. So I thought that was a great speech from him. I thought it was just a great moment in general, especially the specific Arissa part. I just love that scene. It was probably my favorite part in this episode. Um, but that was a really great moment. And then we had another really good moment um, with Daytac when he decided that he wanted to um, die by um, his... Um, species terms and i thought that was really cool like he wanted to die by cast this cast this and i can't even say it right but um he wanted to die by their terms and amanda allowed that to happen probably because it was even worse than him being hung so i was like more pain better for me but that was a really good scene as well and he you know his final words are like you know i want to apologize and say i hope you guys do win in this upcoming battle that you have and he tries to um, sort of do a chant for defiance and stuff, and that was just an interesting moment. And then Alak does bring Luke down, and he tells him, like, you know, when you're older, I'll try to help you understand that he was a very flawed man, but not one without honor. And it was just a good scene for Daytag, because, like, in the last episode, um, when he thought Alak was going to be killed, it was just, like, they gave him some really great emotional moments that we really don't get out of Daytag Tar. So I really love that, um... And just like the last episode, they had some great stuff with everyone just in the Tar family. Because um, Stama had some really crazy stuff too. But I'll get to that, which was definitely cool. But it was just a great moment. I would love to think that they cut away and he didn't die. But it, I just don't see how it could have ended any other way. And it's like, I can't believe that that happened. Where he actually dies i mean they you know i mentioned this before after the premiere i was like everybody's safe i honestly figured there's not a single person is going to be taken out at least none of the main characters will and it seems like they're not messing around you know they've added their new characters we got a new villain uh we got two sort of neutral future villain maybe you know characters and it's like they aren't taking any chances they're like if we feel like it's powerful then that's what we're writing and they're killing characters off in this show and you know it sucks to see you know any character go but honestly of all the characters that have died so far Daytech has admittedly put in the most as far as the series goes as far as 
you know, change in character, um, storylines in general, just the issues that he's caused, the solutions he's come up with, uh, whether good or bad. He's the one out of the three characters that have died so far that has really caused a lot of different stuff to happen throughout these three seasons. So him dying is just really crazy. And I like to hope, you know, somewhere, like, they cut it, so maybe something happened, but... Until the next episode, we have to assume that he did actually die from that, and they didn't stop it for, you know, whatever reason. And it doesn't take that long. I mean, all they're doing is, you know, dropping stones, and it didn't seem like anybody was coming out of anywhere. So, unless it's still going on during that final scene in this episode, you know, he's going to be dead. And that could be the case. It could be that, you know, it was still going on when the people break through underground, and then you know, they come up and, you know, people are guns a-blazing, and it's like, oh, well, Daytech might actually get saved because of that, because they know, like, oh, well, you were working um, to save your son, although it might not matter at this point because Alak escaped. Who knows how that'll play out, where it's like, either they'll care because they actually did it to save Alak, or they won't care because Alak escaped anyway, and it's like, well, now we don't need you guys anyway, so whatever. So we'll see how that plays out, but he could be saved, and I think that hopefully that's how it plays out. But, who knows, we'll just have to wait and see. I hope that is what happens, because, you know, we can't, we don't need to lose any more characters, so. Either way, I hope he does survive, and they obviously didn't show him in the next episode, but I'm hoping that, um, them actually getting into Defiance at the end of this one allows for, uh, Daytac to end up, you know, surviving through TV magic, of course. Then we have his wife, who is dealing with the Omex, and it's like, with the father whose name I still cannot remember um with him it's like okay fairly simple there you know he helps her out and stuff and then with Kinsey it's just sheer hatred like she tries to kill her and then Kinsey almost gets taken down like when she got kicked across the room I didn't even know what happened I thought um Stama did that I was like I don't know if she just got super strength or what happened but Maybe it was, I missed, it was just like a blink and missing moment, but he hit her out of nowhere and she just flies across. And then, you know, it's like he has to kind of show her, like show her some lessons. And then, you know, throughout this entire episode, like after that happens, even during that, Simon was just scared and like we never get to see that. I think we've only seen that, you know, much like with Daytac um, from the last episode with him being emotional. Same for her, like we don't really get to see that happen where she's emotional, at least scared emotional. Like, she's emotional as far as, you know, caring about her family and stuff like that. We've seen that for sure. But her being scared for herself, she normally doesn't have to worry about that. Even in the fight, in the last episode, she was just in a fight, like, you know, I think one of us is going to die. And she seemed really confident that it wasn't going to be her. So, you know, in this episode, I love getting to see that side of her as well, where she's freaked out and she doesn't have um, the same... Well, she has the same skills, but they just don't work on Kenzie. They, it's not the same person, and then it won't matter to her. So I love getting to see her scared, like genuinely in fear of her for her life. And it was just a great moment. Like, I loved all of that, her just being different. And, like, when Kenzie was combing her hair, and she's like, you know, maybe you could, you know, leave later or something. It was just a really good scene. Like, she was so freaked out. And then Kenzie gives her, like, the little... um Thing. I guess it was um, kind of what they used before that's connected to all the technology or whatever. So she makes her swallow that, and it basically shows her the ship. And I don't know if it's showing her maybe memories or anything. I have to assume it is, or like at least recordings. And so she's basically on the ship now, and it's, you know, it just cuts there. So I don't know if Kenzie's doing this to mess with her father or if she's doing it because she thinks it'll help. But either way, I feel like if she's, if Stama's on this ship seeing things from the inside, she's going to see that this ship is holding the rest of the Omec race that they've been lying, and it's not just these two. And maybe that is what Kenzie's planning. Like, she does want to destroy her father because her father's, you know, made her so angry now, and she's going to turn against him. And it's like, well, here's what's really happening. We need this to basically wake everybody up or something i don't know but whatever her reason is i don't really think it was to help her father it was kind of to help herself and either get rid of her father or just cause turmoil and have her father 
kill off Stama. I don't know. But I'm excited to see where that plays, you know, where that storyline ends up going for sure. Because with Stama being kicked out of kind of both the VC as well as Defiance at this point, I don't know where she, who she would go to with this information if she does end up getting it. Like, oh, all the Omek are still alive. She could just shout it to anyone and that would kind of matter immediately because everyone's kind of freaked out by the Omek. So I guess it doesn't matter who she tells it to. It, it would make a difference. But I don't know. Like, I, I'm definitely curious to see what Kenzie's plan was for that. Or it's like, you know, she obviously waited until her father was gone and do it. So what's her main goal? Like, what was the point of giving her like this little bit of secret information saying like you know here are actually all the omek totally alive just in stasis and we just need energy to wake them back up so a lot of like very weird moment there where she kind of just said something in motion i don't know if it's going to be good or bad it's going to be bad for somebody like i feel like pretty much everything in this show is bad for someone no matter what it is it's like something good is bad for somebody in this show so Whatever her idea is, I think it's to help herself and either get rid of Stama by, like I said, having her father um, be like, well, I gotta kill you because I'm not gonna kill my daughter. Or have her father get killed off because he's the commander. Although, if that was the case, she would get killed too because it's still, you know, too Olmec. It's like, well, why should we kill him and not you? So, well, just questions. I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to figure it out at this point. But definitely liked it. Um... The VC are officially in defiance by the end of this episode. I knew the one person was going to die. Like, they break through the wall and now you're like, hello? I'm like, this person's dead. Like, I just I was just like, this, this is going to die. So, that happened, obviously. Um, the guy who was second in command, he takes whatever serum that is and it basically makes him look normal. So, we actually get to see the um, actual actor without makeup on now because he's going to go in and he's going to be... I have to assume, like, the first wave where it's like he goes in, maybe scouts out, you know, the city, like, here are some good points that we can destroy. Um, and they're also underneath the stasis net, so they can take that down as well after, as, after he goes into the city, like, all right, this is where this is and that is, and I'll take it down, and this is where you can come to to basically, you know, take control of the city. So they're in defiance. The big battle is going to be happening, or at least starting in the next episode. I don't know if it'll start and end all in one episode, but... We'll see how that all plays out if Berlin does decide to come back. Um, or if, you know, she loses another boyfriend due to war or something crazy. But definitely a good episode. Um, hopefully Daytag does survive. I love the emotional side that they gave to him as well as his wife. I think her being scared was just like him actually showing that he gives a crap. It's stuff we just don't get to see out of those two characters. So that was very well done. Um, the Arisa scene loved it her you know her and tommy great to actually see tommy sucked that it was just him being shot up and dying all over again but still nice to see him was still cool and i'm really excited for this next episode they it seems pretty bad like the, i think the very beginning was like ron being like shoot the hostages and then just someone starts spraying inside the need one so it's going to be really serious, and I'm excited to see it, but I definitely want to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please comment below, let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, and because this had such um, interesting moments for, once again, you know, the entire Tar family, um, as well as Arissa, I want to know what was your favorite sort of emotional moment out of this episode, because I feel like we had three big ones, um, it was Stama being scared, which was cool, but that doesn't have nearly as much impact to me as um daytag getting to see luke when he was on the thing as well as Arissa um seeing tommy out, out of those two um i think i choose Arissa's moment just because it went further than i even expected it to i thought it was just going to be you know like i said random violence and stuff affecting her and then it was actually tommy and she actually saw him and ran to where she you know was seeing this body where you know he wasn't even there so I think I would choose that over uh, Daytag's moment, but that was really great too. I love that and I like kind of giving him his dying wish and letting him see his grandson one more time. That's, you know, a lot of different things kind of wrapped up in that as well. So I'd have to choose Arissa, but the Daytag moment, um, Daytag getting to see Luke for what he believes is his final time, what may or may not be his final time, definitely a close second for me. But I want to know what you guys thought, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.